OK, <clears throat> uh, we'll just continue with uh, this Wi-Fi hacking module. Uh, so next week, uh, I think from Monday to Friday, we can able to complete the whole class um, and whole syllabus. So uh, we have one topic left that is uh, Wi-Fi hacking. So I'll just complete it off. So Wi-Fi hacking, I just need like about 20 minutes of theory uh, because that is very important. You have to understand uh, from the beginning like how Wi-Fi was introduced, what are the securities that Wi-Fi comes with, and uh, is it really easy to hack a Wi-Fi? What are the challenges we might face? You know, there are so many things that we, we have to understand. Then a practical won't be taking a lot of time that uh, we can able to do it soon, all right? So, okay, uh, let us get started uh, with this. So what am I going to do is, I will be using that adapter, of course, when I start the practicals, but now let us finish this 20, 20 minutes of theory. So by 9.30, we can able to complete this theory part, and then for another half an hour, we can able to complete the practicals. So this would be the theory, but theory won't be that boring, uh, because this is something that something is very new, and uh, it is new for everyone. So uh, we have to understand how this Wi-Fi was introduced, and then and then, you know, which company has introduced. If I ask you a question like, is. Um, most of them, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Nagan, can you please, uh, you know, answer like uh, which is faster? Wi-Fi is faster or with cable is faster? I often yeah. connect with cables. <clears throat> cables is faster, right? Yes, cable. Yeah, so it was faster before, not anymore, <laughs> because the technology has changed, the things has been changed. So usually, uh, when we talk about a LAN cable, uh, we can able to see two types of LAN cable, okay? Especially in India nowadays, we can see CAT5 cable. Cat5 looks like same internet cable, Ethernet cable, and color won't be changed. Nothing like that. You will get it in a normal color also. But there are some Cat SC, Cat6, Cat6A. Six, six there are so many categories. Cat means categories, category five and everything. So the same cat is also used for networking. But what is the difference? So basic, and it is also you know see Cat5 is also used to carry other signals such as. Uh, telephony and video so it is the same thing oh, but what is the difference what is the difference between cat5 and cat6 is a cat6 cables are designed for operating frequencies up to 250 megahertz compared to 100 megahertz for cat5 uh, e so but i'll tell you so usually when we talk about a normal speed um, cat5 uh, will give you the speed of anywhere between 100 mb per second 100 MB per second, that is CAT5, whereas CAT6 will give you 1 GB per second, 1 GBPS. That is the only different. But CAT7 was designed to support up to 10 GBPS, up to 40 GBPS at 50 meters and even 100 GBPS at 15 meters. 50 meters, 40 GBPS, and it can go up to 100 GBPS, but but you in India, whichever the companies you go, wherever you go, you won't find cat seven cables, cat eight cables. You will only find category five or category six, which could be. An Mbps. Usually I was connecting via cables, right? That was giving me an approximate of just 100 Mbps because the entire office LAN is uh, cat five. So if you go to the big, big corporate companies, you might see some cables cat six. So even if I mention by cat seven cable in the internet, see we have it, but Amazon basics uh, RJ45 cat seven Ethernet uh, cable. We have it. It is not like we cannot purchase, but usually companies won't use it because just a 50 uh, feed high speed 10 gbps shield and that comes with just 15 meters that will cost you anywhere between 3400 so due to because of this price nobody will buy it so whereas cat 6 the same see cat 6 
same 15 meters cable will cost you only 600 rupees. 600. The same cat 7 cable is costing you 3400 rupees. That means it is more than 5 6 times, or maybe more than that. I don't know. It cost you this much. So imagine for a company, if you want to do the LAN cabling, you need anywhere between uh, maybe up to 500 meters for a 4000 square feet office. It might require up to anywhere between 300 to 400 meters. Then imagine how much you have to spend for a CAT 7. It will go more than 20, 25,000. Not 25,000. I think you have to do 15 meters is costing you 3,000. Then you have to understand it goes more than 1 lakh. If you, if you are going to buy like 300 meters. 300 uh, meters CAT 6 cable. See. Three, it will cost you how much a 300 meters cable will cost you some uh, anywhere between you know 5000 close right wherever you go you can see up to 5000 so you can imagine how much a cat 7 would cost so we are not in a technology where we can able to afford it even the big companies though they have a lot of money also one gbps would be really sufficient so they will use it via cables but things has been changed now Whichever the laptops that you buy nowadays, you know what will be the speed of that adapter if you are planning to purchase a laptop now, or you might have purchased a laptop last year. Then what would what will be the capacity of your Wi-Fi? I'll let you know in this class. So let us begin some small theory we have. So first we have to understand 802.11 basics. 802.11 basics is an 802.11 is actually from an organization called as IEEE. OK, that is Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. So this is an Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. That means electricals and electronics department. Both of them work together. OK, work together here. So it is currently they have their offices in New York City and they they have this operation centers in new jersey so we have it in bangalore also i triple so i now you understand this i triple but let me tell you so basically this company manages you know see i triple is the world's largest technical professional organization dedicated in advanced technology for the benefit of humanity so basically it is one of the biggest organizations this company is actually they have some uh, professionals uh, you know technical professionals like, uh, like you know electronic and electricals and everybody all the engineers work together and they have introduced 802.11 means first let me show you the adapter okay how does it looks like you all know but maybe some of them have no idea what exactly is i'm talking about yes all this wi-fi technology that you are using today is actually called as i triple e from the i triple e it is 802.11 standard see this these are all from the same company that is i triple e they have used their firmware and everything here maybe the product manufacturing is totally different but whenever you want a Wi-Fi, you will easily purchase this adapter. So this is a small Wi-Fi adapter, wireless adapter. You might have seen this for if you have a computer, then you might have seen this. And if you have any company, see by OK, this is a company name, but here I triple A 802.11 AC Wi-Fi 5. This will be in your laptops. These adapters will be in your laptop, but whereas for computers, some workstations I have it in my house. I basically use something like this. And uh, in your laptop, you will use you will be using something like this. If you have some computer and you want to, uh, you know, you want to work Wi-Fi like wirelessly, you want to get internet, then you need to buy something like this, which will cost you just uh, 200 to 300. Maybe starts with 150 also. So 200 to 300, you can also buy something like this. So this adapter, something look alike like this. Uh, I can even use it like a Wi-Fi dongle. I can even use it for any of my uh, work. 
So now, now you understood about this adopters. What exactly this I3 will is introduced? How it is all started? That we have to understand in uh, theory class. How it is all started? There is a table. Yeah, I got it full. And for your reference, I'll also share this with you. Try to finish it up a bit quickly, okay? Don't worry. Because I'll always try to keep this alarm. I don't know. I was working last night till two o'clock, but I missed my alarms in the morning. I, I'll always keep like this. Uh, 5.30, 5.45, you know, and then 6 o'clock, 6, 5, 6, 10. You won't believe I missed all the four of them uh, because last night I was using my headphone and I was slept. So the alarm was ringing in my headphone and I kept somewhere else. So that has been the reason. And by the time I woke up, it was already 7.30. So that's why I came a bit late. I'm really sorry for that so because um, I rarely woke up in the mornings. I think this is my very first time walking because I have some small project that has to be completed at usually at night time, so I need a lot of time, so that is why. But I have completed it already long back, but anyway, just one more week of class. <laughs> we'll see how does it goes. So, okay, this is the chat we have. In 1997, 1999, 1990, cables, but the only problem was laptops were introduced. But that was not a problem. But what happens is they cannot do. I mean, they can't work on it. They uh, no internet, and as soon as and they can carry the laptop to home. But uh, wirelessly getting internet was very difficult and very challenging thing. But uh, I really wanted something like which is equivalent, which is equal to some cable. The sp same speed, maybe speed varies, but they wanted to introduce something like a Wi-Fi card. Which which everyone can able to work wirelessly. See today I have been connected uh, uh, wirelessly without any uh, wire. I have been connected because I changed my desk from that place to some other place. But here I have my full signals Wi-Fi. I'm not using cables anymore. <clears throat> but in 1997 they introduced a 2.4 gigahertz one which comes with a 2 Mbps. Maybe for 2024 2 Mbps is very small. But that time your 2 Mbps was equal to your 100 to 1000 Mbps speed. OK, that means speed would be the same. But see what happens is today we have graphics. If I send you an Excel file, you will basically need an entire Excel to be installed in your system. If I send you some small text, double click and you can able to see. But those time, um, whatever the documentation that they were making, the whole uh, words that they were typing in an office, uh, usually a document, the document will be less than what is that 10 KB, 20 KB, 30 KB, 40 KB, maximum 200 KB. So 2 GBPS is sufficient to send the documents. They were not you know, sending any films those time. They were not sending any films. They were they, this communication was only used in offices to use for office purpose, not to send some movies. So for office purpose, 2 Mbps was a lot. Um, if you don't believe me, I even asked my father also regarding the same. So in their offices, I even asked him when this technology has come because I, we were born only that time. So where we have used it when I when I already grew up, I already had cat six introduced. So I even got my I asked my father who was who started his uh, career in actually 1996 only. I was born with fast. So <laughs> I even asked them, so they said uh, they were using the same technology, which was just 2 MVP. But as of that time, they were not sending anything like advanced graphics. Now, if I want to send my class recordings, it is more than uh, 250 MB. Sometimes you might get like sometimes you'll get more than 200 MB. If it is one hour of class, maybe 100 MB. I don't know. I never downloaded any of my class videos, not even a single video I have of my class videos, though it is recording. So if it is this video to send this video 2 mbps is not sufficient but that time they didn't had a technology what we are having in 2024 yes don't want to talk about 20s 24 only it's, it's okay to talk 
because we don't have they didn't have the technology what we are having so for that time 2 mbps was really really sufficient for their work okay this 2 mbps then later in 1999 they introduced the same 2.4 gigahertz comes with 11 mbps because according to the technology they are using it got it as per the technology they are coming up 2 mbps to 11 mbps then slowly uh, you know your uh, movies uh, files media videos and everything started uh, working in 1999 it was 54 mbps which comes with 5 gigahertz usually 5 gigahertz not every laptop used to support but in 2003 the same they have introduced 54 mbps in 2003 where 1999 to 2003 they took a long gap to research on it and finally they introduced 54 mbps and then 2009 they introduced 600 mbps usually that uh, that is model is called as 80.11 80.11b b means 11 mbps 802.11a means 54 mbps g means 54 mbps 802.11n means 600 mbps so that is what i am currently using in my laptop maybe in your laptops also you might be using 802.11 if you really want to see you can directly click on this properties once you click on this property just simply scroll down on the wifi so it will show you directly that it is 802.11n wifi 4 so since it is wifi connection it is giving me 300 to 300 mbps but it can go up to 600 mbps if i uh, go with some advanced one got it so aids and then then in 2014 they introduced 6.8 gb per second but unfortunately this won't support any laptops but today we are using 802.11 ax today they have mentioned expected 2019 already expected is finished and manufacturing also finished that wifi 6 technology comes with a speed both 2.4 as well as 5 it comes with 10 gb per second so our internet is fast nowadays but maybe the router that you are using is cheap yes what if the router cost is only 1000 rupees and in your laptop you have 10 gbps it doesn't make any sense because if the router GB, router capacity is only 1 gbps then even if you have 10 gbps in your laptop it's of no use but no worries if your router is good it will support up to 10 gbps also in wifi technology which is equal and not even equal and it is 10 times faster than your cat 6 cable that is why i told you nowadays wifi is also a bit fast if you want to experience the speed of 10 gbps then obviously you need uh, the good router as well as a good laptop wifi adapter so this is the entire technology that was used in those time okay we have a few more just five more minutes and finish it off this topic the same thing this was i was explaining we don't want this we'll just go directly with the security so this also by default 802.11 bg and whatever it is by default comes with some built in security features service set identifiers means ssids ssid means all this new new see iht have connected so this is uh, our wifi so i can identify which is mine and which is someone else i can see that there is a restaurant 1947 restaurant here and there are somebody so they those company usdc project they will they will think like with oh, this our wifi so based on this names we can identify that names are called as service set identifiers so that wifi will be totally different we can add our one so that people won't get confused to connect don't worry about the other things because this is from the comsha i took so we can directly go with some important points how do you connect to a router there are only two ways to connect one is shared key i have to give you the password the other wise i have to make sure that the wifi is open like open wifi so you can see it in um, a cafe coffee day or you can see this wifi in some shell petrol bunks or you can also see this open uh, open authentication in some malls where they'll give you and railway stations that is open means anyone can connect without any password the other one is based allows anyone to start conversations with the access point the moment you type your password it will authenticate 
how shared key authentication actually work. Client begins with sending an association request to the access point. Access point means your router. OK, so once you type a small, uh, I mean, once you type your uh, Wi-Fi password, once it will unencryptedly, the password will go and it will connect. The moment it connects, it, if it is properly encrypted, then access post, access point will allow you to communicate with the client. That's a simple how Wi-Fi works like this only. You, send, you type a password, it will check whether the password is matching with the password that is stored. If it is matching, it will use you the connection, then Doro process begin. Doro process means where DSCP means it will start providing an IP address automatically. Then WEP technology, wired equivalent, something which is equal to wire. That is wired equivalent protocol. Got it? So wired equivalent protocol means they introduce Wi-Fi called as WEP technology. Means they are started telling that see this is a Wi-Fi card which is equal to your LAN cable. They started introducing like this, and it comes with 40 bit of RC4 encryptions. That is a reverse to cipher four encryptions. Means very small uh, encryptions. It is. Unfortunately, since ratification of the 802.11 standard, RC4 has been proven insecure. OK, leaving the 802.11 protocol wide open for attacks. OK, it was not that secure, so it was everybody used to hack this technology. Everybody used to hack. Even if you keep a password also, people were able to hack it because that time what happened was people were using something called as W. Uh, PA WEP some tester. Yeah, WPS WPA tester. OK, this you can now also download it from Play Store that time. OK, not now that time people the Wi-Fi that what people were using was it was WEP wired equivalent protocol also called as WPS and WPA. OK, I'll tell you Wi-Fi protected access. People were using this router. So what happened was when they were using this router, they were downloading this uh, application. And they were scanning all the Wi-Fi's like this and then check the details and check for your network loopholes and immediately it used to give the password. OK, so people were using this door. See, there are 10 crore people have purchased it, but now you can see that 3.6 stars are there. It is because people are illiterate. They have no idea <laughs> because we don't have this technology anymore. W. Doesn't work that time it was working, not now. That time it was working, but nicely they have used it. Uh, but still, if someone use this technology only, see now they say um, I'm getting ads uh, in your free application, but uh, there are more ads. OK, so add is an issue for this guy. Of course, man, if they're giving some technology for free, then obviously they have to make money, right? See, uh, OK, in 2023, December 5, holy shit, I think just four days back. It's a great app. I connected uh, many Wi-Fi use this app. Sometimes it's not working, but it is good app to connect Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's working, but not uh, anymore. Like because if someone is using this Wi-Fi technology, only it works. But you can always see like one 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 one. Simply waste of money. Simply yeah, it is because we don't have the technology anymore. That is why. But that is why you know we have to understand first Wi-Fi. Then we can get started. It was working. Even I hacked it many times. But why it, why it is very um, easy for us to hack is because um, this one, unfortunately, since ratification of the 802.11 standard, RC4 encryption has been prone insecure, leaving the protocol wide open for attacks. Then what they did was this was in um, in 2001. OK, so WEP known since 2001, but in April 2003, after a few years, the Wi-Fi Alliance introduced something called as a security protocol known as Wi-Fi protected access called as WPA. But this Wi-Fi tester was also working for WPA. See WPA tester. It was also working for WPA, but I'll tell you. WPA provides a st stronger data encryptions, which was very weak, right in WP. So WPA was very strong and user authentication was largely missing. Like there was no password, nothing, something like that. So here it comes with a strong passwords and all. But uh, what happened is I'll tell you. I'll tell you later what happened. We don't want that. Then that was also wide open. Anyone could hack. Then immediately on the same year, within few months, WPA version two was introduced in July 2004. Same three. This is four. Uh, did I triple approved the full I triple I that time specification, which was quickly followed by a 
and you, uh, okay there was quickly this they started with wpa2 but uh, we, it comes with a stronger encryptions and authentication for infrastructure and ad hoc network wpa1 is limited for okay that's okay fine but actually what happened was this wpa2 uses in standards that is where the wi-fi hacking was not at all possible it is possible we are doing it today but still wp wpa2 what happened was the version 2 of wpa you don't need to change any hardware just simply update your hardware wpa1 just simply update that's it version 1 to version 2 no need to change any hardware no need to buy a separate device for this but but what happened was this WPA2 uses AES means advanced encryption standards. Anyway, we have cryptography. I'll explain you about more about AES. AES is so strong that it will take hacker a lot of time to hack a Wi-Fi. That is why since 2004 till today, 2000 up to 2019, uh, 19 or 16, they we were all using WPA2 in India. We are using WPA2 till today. Whichever the router you buy, everything is WPA2 is because after 2004, they didn't even work because the Wi-Fi is already secured. So that means what happens is the moment how this Wi-Fi hacking actually work, I'll tell you. But this WPA encryptions are so strong that we have to break the encryptions. Previously, we were getting the password directly. If I give some password as admin at 123, I can see admin at 123 directly using that application called as WPA, WEP tester. But now what happened is WPA2 won't give you. It will give you the password, but the password will be encrypted. To break that encrypted encryptions, you have to use some technology called as a dictionary attack. Without performing any dictionary attack, you cannot do it. That is the main problem of WPA2. Correct. So that is why from 2004 till today we are we are using only WPA2. You won't believe. I'll show you. This is our Wi-Fi. I'll click on properties because it will take hacker a lot of time, more than one hour to hack a Wi-Fi. Now, see WPA2. I told you, right? If you want, you can check in your house also. It is WPA2 only. <laughs> but in my house, I have a router which connects WPA3 also. But if you purchase any latest routers, you can get WPA3, which is even I have to do some research on it because very recently I purchased. So, but anyway. Today technology is WPA2. From 2004 till today, they are simply happy because for hackers it is taking a lot of time to hack nowadays because they'll get the, they won't get the password. They'll get encrypted password. And again, we have to use some other tools to break it. That is the main problem with WPA2. Accessing it's okay. We don't want cracking the WEP key. WEP they are telling, but we are going to perform WPA2 because we don't have a technology WEP now. Okay. We'll be using a latest one. This book is a bit old. OK, all right. So now let us start our. Just get my adapter. I'm sitting in some other uh, room. One second, I'll be back. And if you have any doubts, kindly let me know. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, OK, we'll now get started. OK, uh, what am I going to do is first let me connect my Wi-Fi adapter. I have uh, connected my Wi-Fi adapter now. OK, but there is no light blinking. OK, now it is working. See, I have two Wi-Fi adapters now. OK, uh, now so since it is visible here you have to add this see now it is working here see wi-fi i have two to wi-fi now but what happens is uh, this is the latest one uh, i have to put it into kali linux to do that i can open directly uh, this one uh, this kali linux we have it here right 
click on settings. Yeah, once you click on settings, uh, directly go for networks and in uh, sorry USB and in USB you can click on add in add it will show your latest Wi-Fi see I'm using 802.11 AC I told you now that's the latest one so you can click on this the moment you click you will get that AC here then click on OK once you click on OK then the same Wi-Fi will come and work here and sometimes you have to click on devices in devices you have to select your uh, Wi-Fi networks here for that we have to wait for a few seconds we have to wait a few seconds okay yeah see the wi-fi is now connected but available network it will show it might take some time but it will show you okay so now mean see now it is showing all the available Wi-Fi So today what we are going to compromise is we are going to compromise this IIST our own network because others might take a lot of time. OK, so we are going to compromise this IIST uh, today. So now uh, what am I going to do is I will be connected with cable only here, but if you type IW config, you can see that you have WLAN zero. This is your cable and this is your Wi-Fi. Currently it is in managed mode. We have to change this managed mode to monitor mode, but everything is automatic nowadays. When I learned CH, right? When I learned CH, Wi-Fi hacking was so complicated that you have to remember six or seven lines of code. Yes, it was very difficult, but now no need to worry because it's very easy. <laughs> Previously it was, it was taking a lot of time for me, but not anymore now. Okay, so first you have to type fluxion. LU, yeah, fluxion GitHub. Once you type this fluxion, open the first link of GitHub, uh, fluxion networks. This is how it looks like. Uh, fluxion is the future of man in the middle WP attacks. It works on, say, both the WPA, WPA2. Both it works. WPA3, I have to understand the technology yet. See, we have, uh, you can directly use this, and it is very easy. CD space dot forward slash finish. It will start working directly. I already have fluxion CD fluxion and LS and here you can see that I have uh, fluxion dot SH. I can directly type sudo dot forward slash fluxion dot SH and mention your password. This is how the fluxion works from the GitHub only. Uh, let us wait for a few minutes. Yeah, so now uh, we have this evil twin attack. Evil twin attack means creating two access points which look like fake. People will think like it is only real and they connect. But to do that, you will need uh, one more adapter. You need two, two adapters for this. But let us go with the second one first. OK, that is handshake spoofer means we can able to capture the encryptions of then we'll break the encryptions. Second one you can choose by typing two. Now this will automatically put this into monitor mode. Now it is asking select a channel to monitor. You can monitor only 2.45 or both you want to do. I'll select both because my Wi-Fi will work on both. I'll type three. Now this will give me all the Wi-Fi's that are visible outside the network. I have to wait till I get IAST. I can see that IAST is already here. All the Wi-Fi it will scan. Now listen carefully. Press Control Control C to stop because our uh, our target is already visible. See now it has given all our targets. But what am I going to compromise is this IIST network that is one. I'm going to you can select your target any any of this target. If I want to hack this 1947, I'll select 49 like that. I'm, but as of now, I'm going to hack our one. So I'll type one. OK, now it is asking choose your um, Wi-Fi adapter. So this is my Wi-Fi adapter. I'm going to choose one. Now it is asking this attack is already configured, so I'll simply 
uh, press to reset attack so so that it will show again because I once did it. See now it is showing that IAST has been selected and it is WPA2 technology and this is my MAC address of the Wi-Fi account and this is the channel anyway. Now it is asking select a method to deauthenticate packets. I always go with a reply deauthentication because it works a bit faster. Uh, a reply ng maybe mdk4 also works but if one won't work because what how this hacking is actually working is so those who are connected to that wi-fi right now this wi-fi the wi-fi that i'm using will send deauthentication packets once it sends deauthentication packets everybody in the network will get disconnected then immediately they'll try to reconnect back automatically they'll try to connect back to their wi-fi then immediately it will capture the password that's how it works but it will be encrypted we're going to go with the second one to send deauthentication packets. Now from here, whatever it is asking, right? Simply go with that cow patty and there are so many hashes. I'll simply go with recommended one from here. Every 30 seconds, how often you want to capture the handshake for every 30 seconds. The recommended one. See now, now this is a deauthenticator here and this is handshake spoofer on a successful handshake spoofing. This will give you success here. See now whomever is connected in this Wi-Fi, it will deauthenticate everybody in the network, but sometimes this will happen, but there are some chances like it may not work. You have to try again and again. That is the only problem with Wi-Fi hacking is not every time it works. Sometimes it works. You have to have patience. See, it is trying to deauthenticate someone. But unfortunately, it didn't deauthenticate for 30 seconds. It's trying for another 30 seconds to deauthenticate somebody else in this network. Let us see if it's uh, deauthenticate anybody. It will show you here, and here it will show you successful handshake spoofer. We have to wait for every 30 seconds. We have to wait. And if it won't capture, then again we have to try. OK, 30 seconds again gone, so it is trying for another 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, till it is done, we'll simply wait for it, OK? Nothing will happen. It will simply show you that successful. Successfully it will capture. That's it. OK, already 130 seconds gone. Second one gone. Th third one. This is fourth time. But it will take sometimes half an hour also. But anyway, once it captures, it will take just two minutes for us to crack. It's gone. So here it is. You can click on this and it will come back. Okay, this is another 30 seconds again. Yeah, session timeout, so it couldn't capture. And then again, we have to try that search control C. Now again, I'll go select another attack. Because it couldn't capture, right? So we're going to select another attack. Then again, we're going to do the same thing. or control C to stop. Now it is uh, starting again. Let us type same command. Now press two. 
but this time I'll try to use some different authenticator to check. Then three, but we'll try two times. Okay, we still have another 10 more minutes. We'll try two times. Okay, control plus C. And now it is three. Okay, previously it was in one. Now it is in, where is it gone? Yeah, it is in three. I have selected three now and one. And I'm gonna just simply go with the reset attack so that we'll start from the beginning. Uh, this time I'll go with MD4, MDK4 uh, de authentication three, and I'll go with two and one and two. This is a different one, okay? Because there are only uh, two or three, so we are using the second one. Now. Oh, uh, yes. In packets. The moment it will capture, you have to see here. The client, so that means. Now that it has deauthenticated, that means it has or it has captured the. captured. OK, it is not increasing. But anyway, see it is showing that success. A valid hash was detected and it is stored to a database. Now I have to go to Fluxion database to crack this. I'll press Control C. Our work is finished. Now we can exit. Hmm, MDK4 is pretty good, pretty fast. OK, now it is back to normal. Now we have to open Fluxion, but before opening Fluxion, kindly please download 10 million passwords. That's you know 10 million password list. This one. Yeah, you can click on this download icon. It is just 8 MB. I want you to do it within Kali Linux. Within Kali Linux, go to browser and download that. Okay. So I already have it with me. Uh, let me show you. I'll go with Fluxion. Uh, where is Fluxion? Yeah, here it is. In Fluxion, you can go to attacks. Inside attacks, you have handshake spoofer. Go to handshakes here. See, you have captured successfully, but I have two two here. I will use any one of them. It works, okay. So now what am I going to do is uh, I'll download whatever I have downloaded one, right? So I'll simply uh, copy this and paste it in the desktop. Yeah, I'll paste it here. But I have so many unwanted things. I want to delete all of them. See, 10 million uh, passwords I have. Uh, let me copy this. No, let it be here only. That is 10 million passwords. I'll mention it as I'll uh, edit this. OK. And then where is this Wi-Fi? I think I haven't copied it yet. Is it in desktop? Mm, and OK. All right, I'll just go back to. Kali Linux. I mean, first I'll go to Fluxion. Or, or I can even do something like this. I can directly first copy. I'll copy this 10 million password directly and paste it in this Fluxion. Go to Fluxion, Attacks, Handshake, Handshakes again, and paste it. Holy shit, I just copied. How come I can't paste? Shit. Unsaved. Yeah, cut. And oh, I'm not getting copy paste option. Or I'd only copy this. This IAHT copy. 
and go back and paste it directly here. Hmm, that's it. This got pasted. Now, how do you crack this one? That is very easy. Make sure that you have both and you have type air crack ng. This is the full command. Type air crack ng. working so it shows that it is failed to open okay let me just give a try once again i'll give a try once again see simply tab it is showing that there are two i'm gonna give yeah see it has taken now yeah wait wait Has taken correct now type iphone w space and million uh, password list that's it now simply click enter so this will capture it will start do checking all the passwords and finally it will show you that password is actually password so because i set the password as password if you won't believe i'll show you this is my wi-fi that i connected i'm going to click on properties in properties i can see what is my uh, other no wait not properties i can directly go to ncpa dot cpl and here this is my wi-fi that i connected i'll simply right click click on status wireless properties security show character see this is my password so it has given the same password here this is how you can hack wi-fi see out of 10 million it, it this password was in the in nine after checking all of them 977 it got that means per it took only one second it took only one second to get you the password got it so this is how wi-fi hacking can be done so i hope you understand i completed yeah now exam before 10 only that's good so now tell me if you have any doubts let me know I will, um, I'll, you know, I'll try to answer them all. Do you understand? <laughs> Sorry, what? Uh, can we crack the Bluetooth? Or can we hack Bluetooth? Can, can I hack what? Bluetooth, sir. Bluetooth connections. I, I, didn't, I didn't get it. Sorry, my volume. Yeah, now? Bluetooth connections. Bluetooth connections? Yes. Uh, yes, we have one called as blue jacking. But uh, I don't know if it really works now. We have that Bluetooth one, but usually nowadays it was very, we had one class on Bluetooth hacking before, but now we don't even have it. But we have some Bluetooth hacking, let me see. There was some blue jacking before. In wireless only it used to come. For, yeah, Bluetooth tools, that's called as blue jacking, but now we have spoof tooth i don't know i never used it but maybe this tool might help us to uh, compromise it but i haven't used it because nowadays you i mean bluetooth hacking is something that where the previously we were using bluetooth for calls and uh, file sharing and everything but nowadays no one use it and we had some tools called as blue jacking um, it was blue jacking i'll show you Yeah, blue jacking attack. So yeah, it was very old method. See, blue jacking is an attack in which someone sends unsolidated message to Bluetooth enabled devices, something like that. So we were using it when I studied. I, I had this, but now we don't have this technology at all. So we were using it, this one, but I have to make sure that even I have that Bluetooth in my phone and that phone also should have both of them should be enabled. My Trick was called as blue jacking. Blue jacking, yeah. Uh, previously we had, but now I don't know whether it is working or not. But very few years back I tested. But now they have completely removed it. We don't even have this at all. Okay. So, so how, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Are there any websites that are uh, 
teaching hacking sir not ethical hacking only in youtube in youtube we cannot give that such this kind of videos uh, so youtube strikes so. no your voice is breaking sir hello yeah yeah so other than websites uh, teaching hacking sir not ethical hacking just hacking for practicals okay. uh-huh yeah okay so because hacking is totally different and cyber security is totally different so you want to learn this black hat hacking so black hat hacking is something see there is something that is very illegal and i don't think so if there is any institutions that they are ready to teach first so there won't be any institutions to teach all this but the only thing is we have to find someone who is having this knowledge some websites will tell it this it is that the moment you pay money they vanish <laughs> they'll take the money and they go that's how it is but very rarely i have my best friend who teaches for 2 lakhs he, t- he charges 2 lakhs <laughs> yeah is not from india is from other country so he used to charge 2 lakhs to teach uh, black hat hacking <laughs> used to work on some banks how to do scam fraud <laughs> you know and how to do carding and a um, dark web how to buy laptops at cheaper price they were doing it but uh, i once heard that he was charging somewhere close to 2 lakhs i only know that guy but i don't know any websites if they are ready to teach definitely i know it is no one will ready to teach for free that is for sure but uh, i'm not sure about it but i have a guy but he charges lakhs and lakhs of money um, yeah and you will mention that in the name of education at last <laughs> so he'll just teach you that this is how they do and at last you will say but that servers whatever he invest right so basically see if you want to become a hacker or something i i th- i'm 100% sure it will cost you more than 5 to 10 lakhs not learning to buy the equipments the equipments will cost i th- i once uh, you know calculated i mean i once uh, took all my cal- you know um, things and i was just uh, checking how many i have i have about uh, 30 year tools and you won't believe i spent more than 5 lakhs on them but now it's oh. of no use for me at all it's of no use for me at all i simply throw it somewhere <laughs> and uh, sometimes here and there i can see those devices lying but there are so many hacking tools that are available some illegally you have to buy some legally you have to buy legally also for testing purpose you can buy that will cost you lakhs and lakhs of money the one teaches you will also charge you nicely that is the main thing but cyber security is different and hacking is different people always get confused on this yes. yeah so okay but you can you are try but i don't know but if you pay someone money online without even seeing his face i think your your money is gone that is for sure they simply take okay. this money and they simply scam people and you can't even go complain later that i wanted to learn black hat hacking and i paid money then even you will be behind bars for this so this is what the hackers usually take advantages and they won't even uh, care about it the moment you send money they they will simply send you some ethical hacking videos <laughs> that are there only like for just 500 rupees you can buy them nowadays 300 500 then vanish and you do free so okay. be careful with that but if there is someone they will definitely charge in lakhs and lakhs of money is because hackers are not poor people they have a lot of money they have a lot of money but moreover they will always try to target some big big people so that they will always make good money and they will because the, they are very big hackers they will never work for 10000 20000 30000 because to make this much it doesn't take a lot of time for them so usually if you really find them one thing is for sure they will charge you in lakhs if someone is there i'll teach you in 10000 just remember that hackers are really not poor they have a lot of money and they will always find a way to make money they will never approach anybody nor they will ready to teach someone yeah, especially i am not ready to teach even i know how to hack uh, you know uh, like what is that i can even unlock any car also any car let it be 2019 20 21 model also i can easily unlock them i even know how to uh compromise the radio signals i can literally compromise radio signals and if i whatever i say my phone whomever are connected surrounding 100 meters to me everybody phone this voice will go even i can also do this and mobile hacking what ethical hacking mobile hacking is totally 
basically deal with some dark web if I really want to do and moreover that will cost me lakhs and lakhs of money. The tools that we use and everything we can even compromise the radio signals also that is called as SDR and uh, apart from this we can even hack someone's phone without even touching it. We can even hack someone's Facebook by just visiting some dark web we can get their passwords and there are so many things by just using a phone number we can trace their locations but what happens is that People enrolled for ethical hacking. See, in this class, only most of them are looking only job in this field. So it's of no use if they learn these things also. And the classes will be recording. That is another big challenging for me that I can't even uh, show you anything. I can't even do anything. We can even sniff someone else who is not even in the traffic also. We can even do session hijacking who is not even connected to our network. Even if someone is very far from our location also, we can try to sniff. Everything is possible. The only thing is, there won't be anybody who is ready to teach all this. That is the main problem. Finding a guru is very difficult <laughs> because I have my gurus. It took them years and years. Then later they trusted me and then they taught me. After that, I kept some trust on someone and even I thought I uh, started teaching him how it is done and all. And now that guy blocked my number and now he is in some UP and making good money. But not anymore. The tricks may not work continuously. Whatever I was teaching him, it worked till 2019 only. Then. He made a lot of money that people he took a lot of money in advance that I will do this. I'll do that. Then he called me for help. I didn't respond. So you don't know how to do, but he utilized all the money, left the house. We went to some UP shit <laughs> and then I don't know what exactly happened. Then later he messaged me like I have a lot of problem that this and all because hacking is something it has to be continuous. Every day has to be learning. Lots of uh, things involves. Just like how they show it in films that will never work in real. We can even scan for satellites where exactly the satellite points uh, points are, where the ISS is currently moving. You know, there are so many things we can still do and how they're communicating. And uh, there are so many devices we can also use some technology to communicate with so many things. But uh, those knowledge, you have to find a guru who is ready to teach all that. I, Otherwise, finding them is very difficult to find my guru. It took me years <laughs> now. Also, we are working together, but uh, he's not in India anymore. He's in some other country. So anyway, that's how it is. OK, then uh, do you have any doubts uh, apart from this? Uh, yes, sir. Any yes, sir. What is DVW? How to use that tool? That server DVW. for web publication for web publication only. Or? I've used now once DVW. For CSRF and we have some basic basic things there. Only basics are there in DVW. And you know when DVW was uh, you know uh, launched 2011. <laughs> that is very old. Uh, okay. Yeah, 2011 it was launched, nice. but they don't have much in it because uh, then again you have to enroll for another course called some penetration testing if you want to learn more, or you have to enroll only for web application penetration testing. That will uh, like DVW. We have 100, 100 uh, softwares like that, and again that will take a lot of months and months. Uh, I, I think again three months of course. Again every day one 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 one, but only will focus on web application. Okay. But ethical hacking is like overview, simply overview. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Because usually some professionals will take this course to just simply because 2024. What are the things has changed? How many of them are still working? How many of them are not working? Because mobile hacking was working every month. It was working, but very recently I got an update from that day. Mobile hacking is not working. So this course is only designed for those to think like which techniques of see Wi-Fi I just had and it is still working. So people will just simply enroll just to make sure to get an awareness like OK, this trick is still working. I thought CSRF CRF is no longer working. Then they will be like, OK, fine, then company is safe. So that's how they will get knowledge from this. It is and moreover, this entire course is only for five days before when I learned it is only for five days. But now people won't understand, so they expanded for two months, three months and all this. But if you want to learn only web application, then again you have to enroll for another course where only web application is taught that will go for three months. Or if you want to learn pure, pure uh, web application one that will take you one, one or one and a half year. So that's how it is. If you want to see we have malware threats, if you want to learn only malwares, that malware will take you another one and a half year to two years. I think definitely three years because to learn assembly assembly language, it will take us one and a half year and to create our own malware, which is undetectable. It took me more than three years, so it depends on you guys how many years it will take. Every one module will take you one one year to master. To master only mobile penetration testing, it took me two years 
and after two years that is not not working <laughs> after that it was not working that's how it is got it okay yeah any doubts so can you please uh, uh, do that uh, as a that penetration testing class for 15 minutes or 20 minutes at the end of this course yeah yeah end only we'll do one penetration testing okay we'll do one hour <laughs> why yeah, it, uh, sir, that uh, i accept that uh, explorer db and that some ports and all sir just do that like uh, vulnerabilities through vulnerabilities how to hack sir. yeah okay sir. we'll do it on windows server okay because okay, i didn't sir. teach you windows server how it is done uh, yes. we'll do it on windows server that will take just 20 or 30 minutes for us to do yes okay then all right i'll see Thank you on sir. monday uh, what is the next topic we have it for Monday? Let me see it mobile because hacking. some modules are not working. Mobile hacking is still a challenging. It is still not working, but tomorrow I have some students for that, but they understood it is not working and uh, next itself is mobile hacking. Wow. So <laughs> anyway, uh, but this mobile hacking is also challenging thing that see hack an Android by creating a binary payloads and hack an android device by creating an apk file so not wireless or without touching it so yes, sir, still it is not working android. yeah still it is not working but let me see if tomorrow if it hopefully works it's so what about ios no nah, way gone 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 no it's not it's not happening uh no after ios 11 only after ios 10 ios 10 or 11 iOS is so secured that gone. It is not even working, nor it is communicating. That's why this CH no. When I learned, we had iOS, but now they completely removed that because it's not working anymore. But it is working. I even tried once mobile hacking by just sending them one GIF file on iMessage. We have iMessage. I simply send one MMS, like just simply small photo, like normal one. We have SMS and MMS, right? So I simply use an MMS of one GIF file. The moment he received his GIF file, I got a connection for 30 minutes, not more than that. And to do this, it took me months and months to practice. Yeah, oh. it will take you months and months. You Same for do... Mac also. Uh-huh. Same for Mac as well. Sir. No, Macs we can hack directly. Oh. Directly it will get compromised. Just like how Windows gets hacked, even Mac will also be get hacked. The only challenging thing is, see why Android is safe and um, uh, iOS is safe. Eh? iOS is not, I don't know why uh, both Android and iOS. Why Android is so weak and iOS is very safe is only because there is one feature which is uh, enabled in your uh, mobile phone. Android is a open source. No company owns Android. That is why people can hack because in Android, if Indian government bans an application, you can directly download from other website and you can install yeah. But the same thing in iOS you can't do. But if iOS also give open source. There won't be any difference between Android and um, iOS, Apple, because Apple you can't download, but Android you can download. That is the main vulnerability. So people are whenever they download, hackers are getting connection. That is what we're gonna do in tomorrow's sorry, one of the Monday's class. We will also create an application like this and install and see whether the mobile can really get compromised or not. If it is hacked, what are the things that we can do after once the mobile phone is hacking? That's how it is. If this feature is disabled in Android, then Android is also safe. But they cannot uh, restrict from doing all this is because Android is open source. OK. Yes. OK. All right, then I'll see you guys on Monday and happy weekend. Bye. See ya. Happy weekend. You too, Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.